least we are able to you can you would be able you can you can you can hear me um let's check are we making a quorum for the meeting yes we have a quorum for this meeting yes sir yeah i think we do from all right uh good morning honorable members welcome to the to the minister uh, welcome to the department um today we will be engaging with the uh the annual performance plan and the budget of the of the department um because we're having a problem with our network i'll quickly give over to the minister to okay can we have both um can you fly the the agenda Zoltando? i'm i'm rushing i'm i'm rushing against the i'm racing against load city and you fly the agenda so adopt the agenda and see if there are other matters that that members would like to uh, to to add on the agenda um Are you able to see the agenda, Jay? Oh, am I, am I, am I, am I audible? To... Yes, you are, Jay. Yeah, can anyone move for the adoption of this agenda if there are no additions? Don't get any checks. Don't get any moves. Um, any second, then? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, like saying we 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 raising against the uh, load shedding, um, and that uh, Noltando, if the you could share the 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 rights with one more person, so that if we are kicked out of the system, somebody can be able to continue um, with the with the with the running and coordination of this meeting. Uh, without much ado, let me give to the to the minister after saying welcome to you, minister. And yeah, I, okay. Be, before that, Noltando, are there apologies? Are there apologies for? That? Uh Good morning, Minister. Good morning, Minister. Good morning to honourable members and everyone present in the meeting. Yes, Chair, I've got one apology. Uh, from Honorable Ndadu, he won't be able to join us today in the meeting because he is briefing the legislature on the fundraising amendment bill. Thank you, Chair. Okay, welcome. Thank you very much. Um, without much ado, let's over to the minister to to lead us in the presentation of the. My apologies. My apologies, Chair. Um, I've, I've also got an apology from the Deputy Minister. Uh, he won't be able to join us today due to the fact that he will be attending a cabinet meeting. My apologies, Chair. Thank you. Oh, okay. No. No, okay. No, that's, that, that's okay. Um, apology, I think members will accept this apology. Um, they over give over to the minister to, to lead us in the presentation. Over to you, um, Honorable Minister Nzimande. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson, uh, Honorable Nchabele, and uh, all the honorable members of the select committee and other invited guests. Uh, Chair, I wish to start by apologizing myself. 
that as I'm talking to you now, I'm in a place called Richmond in KZN, where I have a very important outreach program where we are launching an innovation and computer lab and a hub. Now, if I hadn't been here today, I would have postponed this event for the third time now. And uh, I then requested chair, in fact, I tried to call you earlier and send you a message that if you could allow me just to introduce the issues, uh, the context, and then you release me at 10.30. In fact, I've asked for the proceedings here to be stopped from 10 till 10.30 so that I'm able to address the select committee. I, let me accept, Chair, it's not the ideal way, but uh, I hope that uh, I beg for your understanding and your indulgence on this. I don't know how else to put this, Chair. This is a little too idly, baby. Because mm. if, you, if you hit me today until I'm flat, who are you going to hit tomorrow? You know, because I won't be there. So I really wish to apologize. You know that I take the select committee very seriously. And I do respect and do all my best to actually be with you for the time that we have set. So I really do wish to apologize because I'm in this outreach project. And uh, any of your members who come from this part of the country, I'm also inviting him or her to come and visit this as part of oversight of the select committee. So that is my request, Chair, that I would request them to be released at 10 30 and then I leave you to the competent hands of, of our DG. And any other thing you wish to follow up with me, I'm only a phone call away from you, Chair, and I will respond and be able to give you whatever other information you may, you may want. So it's not out of disrespect, but uh, it's out of lots of other things that, you know, we have too many irons on the fire. With that chair and hoping that uh, you, 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 you accept, let me greet you again and the members of the select committee. And I'm just gonna do a very brief uh, overview, not an overview actually, brief introduction of the issues. And then I'll hand over to the DG and my team. In fact, the DG and my DDGs, all of them, are here to, to be able then to deal and answer any issues that you may have. We are honored as always to be afforded the opportunity to present the department's APP and the budget for 2023-2024 financial year. Let me also add, Chair, that to us as the Department of Higher Education and Training, the NCOP is very critical because we are one department actually that doesn't have MECs in provinces, we have got regional offices. And therefore, working closely with the NCOP, especially the select committee is important because you mainly represent people who come from provinces. And uh, we would like at all times to actually invite you to take active uh, uh, participation in overseeing our project. The year 2023-24 is a critical financial year for all government departments and for the sixth administration, in particular because as government, we are now winding up on the commitments we made of the medium-term strategic framework. In February this year, the Minister of Finance shared with the nation positive aspects of our economic trajectory, but also the negative side indicating that the medium term growth at outlook has actually declined. It's not looking as good as we had hoped. An indication that the country continues to face huge fiscal risks that are compounded by weakening finances of the state-owned enterprises in particular. Also, we are facing high debt levels and load shedding challenges, too, which also is negatively affecting our sector. The department is equally impacted uh, <clears throat> as we strive to expand the post-school education and training sector by all these negative realities. Yet at the same time, we are mindful of the high expectations that the nation has from our department. 
For this reason, the department will continue to reprioritize within its existing budget and put controls in place to address any inefficiencies. We have to reprioritize inside our own budget chair if we are to meet our priorities given the present financial situation. Notwithstanding the challenges we face, however, we'll continue to support our young people in particular, though we are also dealing with adults in our department, but our young people are a particular priority so that they access the post-school education and training system. For instance, we've targeted to increase enrollments across the post-school education and training institutions. You'll be pleased to know that, Chair. We are also planning to increase the number of university and Tibet students receiving NASFAS bursaries over the MTF period, uh, which would be from 439,659 uh, NASFAS beneficiaries in 2023, 24, 24 to 559,884 in 2025-2026 uh, financial year. We'll also be finalizing the concept designs for the construction of the two new universities, the University of Science and Innovation in Negurulene, as well as the Detective uh, uni Services University in Hammond's Club. I also wish to point out Chair, that I'm very pleased that this financial year we will also be finishing the feasibility studies so that we can start uh, constructing these in earnest, the Guiani campus of the TUT University, as well as the satellite campus of the University of Suludent in Ulundi. This is part of our deliberate expansion of higher education footprint into rural areas, Chair, which is one of the of my most important priorities actually. Alongside this, we'll be implementing student accommodation projects for the provision of 28,000 student beds directly by government from the Fiscus. But at the same time, I've also asked NESFAS to speed up the process of accrediting private providers because government funds alone are not enough to be able to meet the student accommodation demand. So I've said to NESFAS, since they are the funders of private student accommodation, well, as well as university and college all, please accredit and allocate uh, providers as soon as possible so that we are able to minimize the negative impact of this project. So the 28,000 beds will be from our infrastructure and efficiency grant, but obviously we need much more, which is why we are partnering with private providers. Artists and development uh, chair and honorable members remain one of our key priorities. In this regard, we plan to train, in terms of the NDP, 30,000 artisans per annum as from uh, 2030. But we think we will meet this target before that. In fact, we think that it is what we are planning now, at least to, sorry, Chair, we are planning to produce 30,000 artisans per annum. But this year we are training, we are going to be training already 30,000 artisans in Tibet colleges, increasing the trainees to 36,000 in 2025, 2026. Learners and skills development programs will also increase from the targeted 149,255 and a half thousand in 2025, 2026. The department will also intensify efforts towards addressing the imbalances of skills, supply and demand in South Africa. The process for developing a countrywide master skills plan under the theme, one country, one skills development plan has already started. This is one of the most important initiatives that we are going to have a master skills plan for the country. This groundbreaking initiative will provide strategic direction to the country's skills system, bring about coherence in skills provisioning and clarify institutional arrangements, and ensure that skills development in South Africa is relevant and responsive to the needs of the economy and society. This initiative of a master skills plan will also include identifying game-changing sectors, such as the hydrogen economy and the skills it requires, the agro-economy, digital technology, 
and will begin to articulate the skills requirements at both domestic and global level. In fact, I'm very pleased Chair, to say that the, the innovation hub I'm, I'm opening today, they've just shown me ultra modern computer facilities and computer room that seated here in this rural areas, these students can be able to receive instruction from someone who is anywhere in the world and can be able to actually listen. And also as students, they can be able to connect in different parts of the country doing the same thing and listen to one lecturer and also engage. This is what we want to significantly increase this year as well. That's why I've asked amongst other things, the National Skills Fund to prioritize the expansion of digital skills training. With regards to student funding policy, I've committed to submit to cabinet clear proposals this year based on the consultations that we are completing now with the banks uh, we're on the proposed government guarantee scheme, especially for the missing middle students. Honorable chairperson and honorable members, I have observed with concern horrible instances of gender-based violence and murder in some of our higher education institutions targeting female students. I'm engaging with the vice chancellors and Tibet college principals, including the security cluster of government on minimum norms and standards for safety and security to ensure a safe, secure and proper learning environment for staff, students and visitors. Whilst higher health is continuing to provide psychosocial and related student support services, I'm also glad to announce Chair through your select committee that during the 2023-2024 financial year, I'll be launching a very important initiative called Transforming Mentalities Initiative. We'll be a multi-stakeholder partnership and campaign within the post-school education and training system on mobilizing men. That's why we say mentalities within the sector to be part of championing a world free of gender bias, stereotypes, violence, and discrimination. In this regard, a multi-sectoral PSET task team will be established to implement this initiative as part of the many initiatives to combat GBV within the post-school education and training sector. We'll be more than happy during the course of the year to come back, of course, at your invitation to give you some more detail, especially after launching this campaign, so that you, ourselves, you yourselves, you know what it is about and we are able to exercise oversight. My other key priority for this year is to come up with revamped proposals to change the size and shape of the post-school education and system. As you know, Chair, our NTP says by 2030, we must be having two and a half million Tibet college students and 1.6 million university students, but we are nowhere near that. We have seven years to go. And what I want to do by the end of this year is to come up with a very concrete proposal that I'll place before cabinet and I'll place before parliament to say, if we want to move closer towards meeting that target, this is what needs to be done. Big shortage we have in our country, is colleges. May I invite you as I close, honorable chair and honorable members to please join me in acknowledging the many strides that we have made, which the DG and the team will highlight in encouraging a skills and competency-based curriculum for future jobs and lifelong development that the post-school education and training institutions are implementing. We aim to continue to partner with industry as well to produce the skills needed. On the 24th of this month, I'll be presenting our budget vote and I will outline in detail our plans for this current financial year to improve the capacity of the post-school education and training system to meet the skills needs and development of the country. In conclusion, honorable chair and honorable members, I remain thankful to our director general, Dr. Gosnati Sishi, and our DDGs and the rest of management for their leadership they give to the post-school education and training system. May I then, with your permission, Chair, invite the DG to lead the presentation and provide the details on the plans for the department. As I said, Chair, I humbly and sincerely request then that I be excused at 10.30 so that I can continue with this project, which I'm sure the NCOP itself would be very proud of. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Modula Stu. 
Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm done, Chair. I don't know whether we've lost you. Am I still audible to others? Yes, we you are. Okay, we seem to have lost the chair, but I'm done on my part. Thank you very much, honorable chair and honorable members. Chair. Uh, am I am I audible? Yes, you are audible now. Oh yeah, no, sure, yeah, no. Um, okay, thank th th thank thanks a lot, uh, um, honourable minister, for your opinion remarks, and that I don't think members will have um, any uh, hiccups in letting you attend to, to other matters related to what we are here about. Um, the implementation and the rough. and that uh, we if there are issues or questions that may need your the ministerial responses i think we're not lost we can we can um in our next meeting either raise those questions and or raise them in writing and uh, and I think that will be in order if the if the members I, I think the members will understand this. Um, I'm just taking it that we are all together on this one, and if we are not, the members will show by show of hand. Um, so with this words, um, you are released, a minister, when that time comes to leave, uh, for you to to attend to other to other issues. Uh, other members, that's the presentation by the minister let's give over to the dg to to present whatever to present what is left of the on the program over to you dg uh, thank you very much um, uh, honorable chair uh, Honorable and Chabilene, um, uh, it's a great honor uh, to be um, here with you today, presenting on behalf of the uh, department. I take this opportunity to thank our minister, uh, Minister uh, Dr. Blade in Zimande, uh, the member of parliament and uh, the minister of both the Higher Education Department and Science and, and, and Innovation uh, Departments uh, in the Ministry. Uh, and I'm also uh, uh, grateful for the opening remarks that the Minister has uh, made. They contextualize the, the, the presentation um, we are here to make. I'm not a lone chair uh, person, I'm with uh, uh, the CFO of the department. At some point, uh, I'm going to call upon our CFO to uh, present the budget for the 2023-24 financial year. Um, and there are also other deputy directors generals that are here with us uh, to uh, present on behalf of our minister and deputy minister. Um, the next page, Mr. McKeever. Uh, uh, Chairperson, this outline of uh, our presentation uh, gives a, a sense of what the thrust of our presentation is. We certainly are going to, uh, you know, and hopefully we will uh, uh, inspire the, the committee uh, in our coverage of highlights and achievements of our department, uh, you know, within the uh, the, the, the aims and, and targets for the medium term strategic framework, the sector priorities as prescribed uh, you know, uh, by um, um, our president, the key outputs 
uh, for the 23rd and 4th financial year and budget information for the 23rd to 24th medium term expenditure framework. I think it's important, uh, 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 Honorable Chair, that I folk around the uh, presentation with uh, very specific uh, you know, uh, areas in the constitution that inform the work that we do, but at the same time use this, uh, uh, the constitution to show the challenges that uh, are confronting the sector. And uh, this hopefully will uh, provide context that is necessary. Whereas, uh, you know, the section 29 of the constitution of the Republic of South Africa, Act number 108, states that uh, in section one, everyone has a right to basic education, including, uh, you know, adult basic education. When it comes to, when it comes to, um, you know, uh, higher education and further education, the constitution says that the state shall make higher education, uh, you know, available through reasonable measures progressively and uh, making this, uh, uh, you know, accessible as it develops the capacity to do so. This is crucial because in essence, what it means is that in South Africa, uh, there's free basic education. And, and, and this compulsory education is not uh, reciprocated by a compulsory higher education and training system. Instead, higher education or further education is only made available on the basis of the capacity of the state. Uh, therefore, every year uh, when uh, we receive young people from basic education, we are confronted with this reality of, uh, you know, do we have the resources uh, to, uh, to, to, to make sure that this is done? And uh, I am happy and I'm grateful that the state has not failed education uh, uh, and, and uh, the minister has said so in his uh, opening remarks. The medium term strategic framework uh, and, and its outcomes provides clarity on what we aim to achieve a uh, 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 chairperson. Biggest uh, you know, area is the uh, accessibility to PSET opportunities. Uh, expanding access to us is going to be, uh, uh, it continue to be our biggest uh, area of, uh, you know, you know, uh, and then, and later on we will present uh, uh, what we have done with the funding model, you know, to try and expand, uh, you know, our initiatives and uh, the impact of our initiatives, such as the NSFAS, uh, that seek to subsidize uh, through bursaries uh, many young people from the poor and the working class. Success and efficiency. Uh, still remain uh, very, very important. Um, you know, uh, success and efficiency is, uh, is, 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 is important in, in this regard, uh, you know, optimal use of resources, um, you know, uh, that are allocated to us. This will uh, be shown in the uh, presentation when uh, we get to the part where we present the financial information. We have to ensure quality education provision uh, uh, by ensuring that excellent teaching and learning in our institutions, which are universities, which are CETAs, which are colleges, both uh, TVET and community education and training colleges. The responsiveness of the system is still important. It enables us to address education and training needs of individuals, employers, and society. Uh, Chairperson, our minister has identified the, the, the young people of South Africa that are not in education, not in employment, <laughs> and, and not in any training as one of the biggest uh, you know, commitments uh, of the uh, last year of, of the administration. Uh, and, uh, in the, and in this regard, our minister has called for improved social 
social and economic development uh, in the PSET system and, uh, uh, and, and service delivery in this regard being important. This slide uh, that uh, is uh, uh, currently shown uh, provide uh, student enrollment uh, you know, uh, in the PSET institutions for all universities, for TVET and CET. You can uh, see Chair, that uh, uh, the university sector, uh, uh, which is shown in the blue line, is on an upward trajectory, which therefore means that uh, the, 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 the education and training system in South Africa uh, is uh, on an upward uh, trajectory and we are absorbing uh, many young people who aspire to access higher education. And this credit goes to this, the, our government that has uh, made resources available. And I think uh, mm -hmm. when we have a chance to come in and account uh, to our parliament, uh, you know, in terms of these resources uh, allocated to us, it's a, it's a privilege uh, to, uh, to us. Uh, you can see that the TVET sector is projected for the financial year 2024 to be um, going to spike very high. Uh, we expect that uh, we will, uh, uh, you know, increase numbers from uh, 547,000 to uh, far more than 620,000, um, you know, up to 2.5 million uh, by 2030. Uh, this work, we have started to do, and uh, we are going to uh, the, the, all the villages in our country uh, throughout the length and breadth of, of South Africa uh, to get young people interested in community education and training in our programs for CETAs and in our TVET programs in particular, uh, notwithstanding uh, that our universities are urged to focus you know, on occupations in high demand. So that relevance of the education that we provide is also, um, you know, ensuring that our economy continues to perform and uh, it continues to benefit from the young people exiting uh, the system. NSFAS funding uh, between 2018 to 2021 is on an upward uh, uh, trajectory. You can actually see the numbers there, Chair, from 2018 uh, in universities, uh, it has grown from 260,000 to 450,000 uh, uh, by in the outer year 2024. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, Chairperson, I think uh, we are really, really uh, feel that uh, uh, this is what uh, the select committee must be proud of. Be proud that uh, just this year only, we have funded 1.1 million young people from TVET and universities in all our institutions. This is uh, uh, really something uh, that is uh, important. Uh, you know, 1.1 million young people funded, not funded only in terms of tuition fees, funded in terms of learner support materials, funded for accommodation, funded for uh, you know, other uh, requirements, including allowances that are, provi are provided. Uh, uh, and this is really something that uh, we are proud of. And if you go back to many years when we started with TEFSA, uh, where we had about 7 million, uh, uh, I'm sorry, 7,000 students, uh, to say that right now we've got 1.1 uh, million students that are funded through, through NSFAS is important. But Chair, I must also say that uh, whereas in the past, when we started NSFAS was a loan, right now NSFAS is not a loan, but it is a, a, a bursary. This is something that is a, 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 a South Africa and even the members of the select committee must feel proud of uh, because it is the work that you do representing the views and the, the aspirations of our people. Uh, that has led to you helping us to increase the resources uh, that we allocate in the funding of young people in the system. Next.
at the, the, uh, in the couple of uh, years, uh, two years, three, three years ago, right at the beginning of the administration, we announced the decade of the, the artisan. And, uh, and, 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 and this uh, decade uh, of the artisan meant increased numbers in artisanal training programs of our department. Uh, in this regard, Chairperson, we have absorbed uh, great numbers, you know, uh, in this regard. You can see in the years of COVID, those numbers, uh, you know, uh, uh, dropped. But uh, I can assure you now that uh, we are in 2023, we are moving up again in terms of, uh, you know, the trajectory of improved uh, uh, output to the extent that uh, our targets for 2030 is uh, to produce 30,000 uh, uh, artisans. I am happy to, to report that uh, we are already in this particular financial year anticipating that we already will reach the target of 2030 in terms of the number of artisans that we are going to be producing. And we will show in the presentation how this is going to be achieved. Uh, quite clearly, uh, this is about uh, the fact that in the past, we had uh, Indela being the only trade testing uh, institution. Now we've established centers of uh, specialization 13 uh, additional centers of uh, specialization across the country, which has allowed us to now increase the volumes of artisans that we are training. And therefore we are going to be looking very carefully at uh, those that exit with certificates uh, so that we improve uh, you know, in accessibility you know, to the training programs uh, that uh, the TVET um, uh, programs are uh, are, are running in particular. CETA supporting LENA, supported LENA uh, programs are reflected there, Chairperson. You can actually see that uh, there is a, a great in, uh, a number of young people uh, that uh, are, are registered uh, in these programs. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and the CETA supporting learning programs supported uh, learning programs, uh, you know, and, and the registration figures show the volumes that we are absorbing. And uh, I'm happy to see that uh, in the latest figures, we are beginning to also show, uh, uh, you know, increased, um, you know, capacity to absorb more learners um, uh, after the COVID uh, pandemic. Chair, when we speak about uh, the expansion program of the department, uh, it must also be seen not only in the light of increased numbers absorbed in the, in the system, but it must also be seen in terms of infrastructure that we are building to accommodate the growth of the sector. Uh, uh, pictorially, you will see uh, um, you know, uh, buildings uh, you know, completed, not uh, the ones that we are still thinking. Uh, just for the sake of this uh, presentation, we decided that uh, we will just show you that uh, Umsinga, you know, campus under the Umkungundo Tibet uh, College, uh, in the past we were planning to build it. Now we are happy to say it is completed. That uh, SIT Tibet College at Umzimkulu it's now completed. Kwanongoma Umtashana Tivet campus is completed. Kwakrigazi is completed. Ikala Tivet College at Alwal North in the Eastern Cape is completed. Ingo Tivet College at Ngungushe Eastern Cape is completed. The Eastern Midlands Tivet College, you know, uh, we, we've just finished Tabazimbi, uh, you know, uh, campus in the Popo province uh, completed. Uh, you know, we, con we continue, we are in the plan now to, to build uh, a new campus at Kia in Kiani, uh, you know, for the uh, TUT uh, uh, University, uh, but uh, at Mupani uh, Tivet College uh, is a new uh, campus in Kiani, uh, uh, Greater Kiani, uh, where the feasibility uh, uh, study is finalized and we are building this new campus there again. And Kher Sibande 
in the new Balfour campus, uh, you know, called already under construction uh, at the Palisen, uh, you know, municipality. Uh, in, in the Bambanana, uh, Umfolozi uh, work has been completed. Uh, in the Western Cape, Mitchell's Plain, um, uh, already planning uh, of new campuses is done. This is to show the select committee that uh, we, we are in the rest of the country, in all the provinces, ensuring that the expansion of the system is uh, uh, able to absorb the big numbers that uh, we are planning to absorb at 250,000 uh, from the current uh, 600,000 average numbers that you, the system is able to absorb. I'm happy to share this with you, uh, Honorable Chair, and I wish that you will be invited in future just to give details in terms of our infrastructure program because it, we are excited about what we are doing. And uh, I'm happy to also say that uh, next year, uh, this, this particular year, we are going to be building two additional universities on top of the new universities that we've already completed. As you know, Pumalanga University uh, has been built. Uh, you know, as you know, uh, Sol Plak University has been completed. It's running and it's already uh, graduating students. We are now planning to build two new universities at Eguruleni, and this is going to be the Science and Innovation University. And it's also going to be another university at uh, uh, of policing at Haman Skral, uh, uh, which is going to specialize in crime uh, detection. This is the contribution of the post-school education and training. And uh, you can see in the slide, I'm not going to go through it, uh, other developments that shows that uh, we are not focused in one particular area in the system. We are building the capacity of the system in all corners of our country. And hopefully this is going to improve accessibility of uh, our institutions. The priorities uh, for the 2023-2024 financial year uh, as prescribed by our president indicates that in this particular financial year, we are going to uh, strengthen and, uh, the changing of the size and shape of the PSET system. So that what I say is our infrastructure initiatives and uh, Chair, may I uh, not miss the opportunity to, to just uh, excite the co select committee uh, with the news that we are going to be building nine new community education and training centers in all the nine provinces. In this uh, financial year, it's going to be started. And in August, this financial year, we are moving into sites uh, in the provinces that are ready. Uh, we are currently finalizing the student funding model, which already chairperson has been tabled uh, to our cabinet and, uh, and it's in the final stages, which is going to ensure that NSFAS is sustainable. As you know, that uh, the current uh, model, uh, operational model of NSFAS uh, is not sustainable chairperson uh, because of the demand, uh, not only in terms of uh, the numbers, but the demands of our economy that uh, requires that uh, we begin to uh, focus on the occupations in high demand. The establishment of our two universities have made reference to it. The placement of our students through a funding scheme in collaboration with NSF, we in this regard are targeting young people uh, that are trained and placed in workplaces. I am happy, Chairperson, to report to the committee that uh, uh, our president committed us to placing 10,000, you know, uh, 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 TVET graduates in the last financial year. And uh, in eight months, we managed to, to, to place 16,000 and exceed the target that our president had, uh, you know, um, you know, set for us. We now in this particular uh, 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 performance planning uh, are saying, uh, uh, Chair, we will increase uh, by 100% the numbers from 10,000 to 20,000. But uh, this is only in as far as Tibet colleges are concerned. In the rest of the system, Chairperson, we are not going to just be satisfied with meeting the 
10,000 and 20,000 in a country that has unemployment, uh, so much poverty and, and, and inequalities. We are going to go out of our way to making sure that uh, young people of South Africa through the length and breadth of our country uh, experience the opening of the doors of learning and culture for all. Truly, literally, uh, in every corner of our country, we are going to be opening opportunities for young people locked out in the system because they cannot access it because they have no funds to do so. This is crucial for us and therefore the, the importance of the funding model. The enrollment figures uh, are already telling the story of our expansion and uh, improving access. Uh, for example, just uh, uh, the fact that this year we have increased by 2.1% the numbers of young people that are accessing or, or that are first time students that are entering our university. It is uh, an indication of um, not just the policy uh, the, uh, in a, in a statement, but also the implementation you know, of, uh, of that program you know, uh, in, in this regard. Next slide. Artisan learners trained in Tibet colleges, chairperson are going to increase. Uh, these numbers uh, uh, um, are, are saying from 30,000 to 36,000. Uh, but I can assure you, Chair, that uh, this year alone, and uh, not uh, uh, you know, in, in 2020 to 2025, we want to achieve that target of 36,000 in this financial year and, and, and not in 2025, 2026, because we are determined to excel and exceed uh, uh, you, we hold ourselves to very high standards. And in this regard, we are committing to outdo the figures of our artisanal training. And it's not uh, just an ambition, Chair. I've indicated that we've increased uh, uh, trade testing uh, to more than 13 centers currently, from one training tra trade te testing center to 13. We want more uh, so that... Uh, in the uh, 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 township closest to where honorable members live, there is a trade center there and young people that are involved in entrepreneurship, pro in, in, in artisanal programs can access training and testing and, 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 and gain certificates there. We will increase uh, our infrastructure plans, uh, the concept designs for the uh, new universities, that we are going to be uh, building. I think you can actually see uh, the, the completed universities, uh, the Sol Black University there, uh, the, that in, in, in even the kind of infrastructure we are rolling out is uh, uh, the top drawer you know, infrastructure that uh, our young people deserve. Uh, we will implement nine projects for the provision of 28,000 student beds over the MTF, the minister, did uh, touch on this, I'm not going to uh, dwell on it, but we will also build 12 community learning centers over the MTF, starting with the three in the 2023 financial year, which includes uh, uh, in Gauteng, we are going to Tsunyane, where we are uh, in Heidelberg, we are going to be building a, a, a community, one of the 12 community learning centers planned for the rest of the country. We are going to Wakuka, Emalashene, where we are going to be building a similar center and an ear refer in the Western Cape, we are going to be building another community learning center. As you can see, our national footprint uh, as, an, as a PSET system uh, it gives us an advantage of presence in the whole country. And uh, we hope that uh, we will give all South Africans something to celebrate in the programs we are ro rolling out uh, uh, notwithstanding the limitations in the resources at our disposal, of which uh, at some point we'll ask the support of the select committee uh, when we beg for additional resources, particularly to expand infrastructure. Building eight TVET college campuses over the MTF and making two additional uh, you know, campuses in this regard, which is 
uh, Bambanana campus and the, as well as Greytown campus is a commitment we are making. We are going to be working with the DUT uh, to complete the engineering building, uh, uh, which is part of the Imbali precinct uh, as, as part of the multi-purpose uh, program, uh, which uh, uh, this year is going to be focused upon in Kiani, uh, you know, as well as uh, in Ulundi. We are going to ensure that 6,000 students participate in work integrated learning programs uh, in construction mm. over the MTF. The success and efficiency is, is, a, is a strategic uh, a focus of our department. We don't want just to absorb uh, big numbers, but we also want to see that these numbers absorbed exit with qualifications that are relevant uh, to the economic needs of the country, but also uh, that uh, opens opportunities for the graduates to uh, set up their own jobs so that they become employers instead of looking for jobs and yeah, themselves. We want to increase university graduates in the engineering areas. We want to ensure that initial teacher education, we increase the numbers that in our master's programs, we increase the numbers and we put targets that are clear. In the doctoral program, we want to increase numbers and we've got targets that we have set. And uh, also, um, Chairperson, this goes with the transformation of the sector. Uh, we've got a UCDP program which seek to train uh, young professors and young academics so that we see the transformation you know, in the university sector with new uh, and young professors, you know, that uh, emanate from uh, designated groups uh, so that we also drive the transformation and change the profile of the management of our institution uh, to be a reflection of uh, the, the, the country, uh, uh, the rainbow uh, country we live in. The reason um, uh, as, uh, uh, for, for success, uh, a number of them, uh, but uh, I think it's important uh, 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 to also say that there are some challenges which we are confronted with and we will deal with them uh, going forward. Uh, next slide. The increase um, uh, uh, in, in, uh, in, 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 in success and efficiency will be reflected through the certification that are issued uh, for qualifying students. And uh, we are focused in this area. We want to increase artisan development program uh, up to 28,000 um, uh, in, in scarce skills areas and increase learners who complete learnerships uh, uh, through our CETA programs and learners who complete internships. Uh, uh, these will also increase. Learners who complete skills programs will increase uh, up to 130,000. Uh, you can see the ambition there, Chair, from 105,000 to 130,000 by 2020 Then the process qualifying trade testing applications, this within 40 days, uh, we want to reduce the lengthy process. We are setting standards here of saying uh, qualifying uh, tra trade testing applications must be responded to within 40 days and uh, not uh, uh, sit for the whole year having applied uh, because uh, we have increased the capacity so we can actually achieve this. Increasing the number of CET college students completing the GTC is important. We are working with SACWA to finalize the NASCA uh, qualification as well uh, so that uh, graduates uh, uh, are able to receive uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 qualifications that open the doors in the economy. We are focused on improving the quality in the provisioning of post-school education and training. The NGAP program uh, at the level of university has produced 85 young professors that have graduated who are in this, in this program for the last six years. And uh, these are the uh, graduates who can now start applying for positions in management after this program. About 40 uh, have, have been allo allocated scholarships and, uh, or internship positions 
to universities through the Nurturing Emerging Scholars Program, because we, we do not want uh, the same profile in the system of an elderly uh, scholar um, uh, cater within the system, but we want young, you know, uh, 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 and uh, imaginative scholars that are going to be absorbing our system to help us to making sure that our university system is transformed, but also that uh, it, it is sustainable, uh, you know, and uh, over over a long period of time. The doctoral scholarship program is a successful program of the department. We are going to increase the proportion of university learners who hold doctoral degrees, as well as establishing an advisory panel on the implementation of the language policy, including the increase of the percentage of college lecturers that are holding the professional qualification uh, from 75%. We are committing to a higher target of 95% uh, and, uh, and I think uh, we, we are eager to uh, not just set these high targets, but to achieve uh, the, the, these targets. Uh, and increase the support of our TVET lecturers who hold appropriate qualifications, including increasing placement of TVET college lecturers, as well as increased lecturers participating in project-based lecturer capacity building programs, particularly targeting electrical plumbing and mechanical engineering. These are the areas which are targeted in our lecturer development program. We are going to increase the number of TVET colleges offering the fourth industrial revolution uh, aligned skilled training programs, increase the number of lecturers participating in digital literacy, as well as ensuring that all public Tibet uh, college uh, sign uh, uh, at least two protocols with industry. In fact, Chairman, let me just indicate to you that I've uh, ensured that all principals sign a perform performance agreement that says each and every college will have a, an, an, an agreement, uh, you know, or protocol uh, um, uh, with the industry in the area where they are located. So that we strengthen partnership between our colleges with the industry so that we improve the prospects of, uh, you know, graduates uh, being placed in the workplace and, uh, and, and also being absorbed in positions of employment. Uh, I think it's important that I mention this over uh, and above the fact that uh, we are more focused on young people creating employment than being uh, absorbed in, 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 in jobs only. We will ensure that uh, the responsiveness of the system continue to improve by ensuring that we implement student fo focused entrepreneurship development programs. In this regard, Chair, may I uh, indicate that uh, We've allocated about, about uh, half a billion uh, uh, through the NSF funding uh, in a collaboration with the uh, CEDA and the Department of Small Businesses in the training of entrepreneurs uh, you know, in our country. And this program is aimed at ensuring that those entrepreneurs that graduate, they don't graduate with just a certificate, but they have a toolkit that enables them immediately they graduate to set up practices and their own businesses so that the focus of the system is not just you must get a job, but you must create jobs uh, for others. Increase the new accreditation programs and part-time or part qualifications that are offered in colleges uh, by uh, hooping um, uh, five to 11 uh, by the 25, uh, 25 and 6 uh, financial year, increasing the number of college lecturers that are trained uh, in accredited programs uh, from a thousand uh, in this particular year, financial year, to 2,500, which is more than 150%, you know, uh, increase uh, cumulatively, you know, over the outer year is an ambitious tra target, and uh, we are determined to achieve it. The policy and legislative programs, we are not going to drive transformation if uh, uh, our policies are not uh, aligned to the uh, uh, agenda of our transformation. Uh, the minister spoke, spoke about the transforming mentalities program 
uh, by the 31st of August, 2023. And, uh, and uh, I wish to, in addition to the, the imagination of our minister, to say that uh, a program of the United Nations called Transforming Mentality, we want it being realized in South Africa, not in Europe only. And uh, our minister is the face of uh, this South African program. We are going to be launching this in August. And uh, we, we hope that uh, we'll be working with the select committee as well in ensuring that we excite South Africa about the importance of fighting gender-based violence. And that, that fight is led by an active cadre of men so that the mentality of men changes. And, uh, and in this regard, the work that is done by activists uh, uh, for gender empowerment is going to be complemented through this program. We have uh, um, uh, uh, to publish the National Qualifications Framework. I'm happy to say that this is already uh, with the president and uh, it has gone through processes. The N NQF uh, Amendment Bill uh, will be finalized uh, sooner. The draft uh, revised Higher Education Act has already been approved by our minister, uh, uh, Dr. Blade and Zimande, the, the development of a countrywide master skills plan for approval by our minister by the 30th of, of uh, all our policy programs have timeframes to indicate exactly by when it shall be done so that accountability is ensured uh, sh so that performance management uh, is clear, but also so that consequence management uh, is, uh, is unleashed. The administration is important. We've got to turn uh, uh, around the system uh, to, to, uh, uh, for the better. I'm happy, Chair, to indicate that the number of sitters that have achieved clean audits in the system has increased. The number uh, of uh, uh, the rest of other PSET institutions that we have uh, uh, are responding to Operation Clean Audit uh, driven by the minister. And uh, in this regard, we also are uh, uh, working hard to, uh, you know, improve the feeling of vacancies, uh, but also creating additional opportunities for young, for young South Africans that uh, have exited, you know, education and training or PSET programs, as, uh, and and they are absorbed in the system uh, by government departments, by our government, but uh, we are also there to provide alternative training so that we align the training that received with the needs of the economy. Uh, we are going to be developing a business continuity plan, finalize the disciplinary cases within 90 days, and we commit to rolling out implementation of safety and security minimum norms. Uh, we started this year under a very, very sour note at Fort Hare University with the killing of the bodyguard of the vice chancellor. Uh, this has led to us establishing a national task force uh, in collaboration with the, our uh, you know, uh, state uh, uh, security agents. And uh, we are hoping that uh, uh, the, the norms and standards that we are developing, uh, which are informed by the minister's report on the security of the peace sector, as well as uh, the report that uh, has been uh, done in collaboration with the police, to try and look at the minimum norms and standards. And I'm happy to announce that we are now at the rollout and implementation phases uh, of, that, uh, of that program. Allow me, Chair, at this point in time to call upon our CFO uh, to take us through the financial information, uh, which is going to indicate how these issues that I've raised about policy are going to be funded so that our, our committee uh, is uh, recognizing the fact that uh, our commitment are not just, uh, uh, you, know, um, you know, without uh, resources committed to ensuring that we achieve this. Uh, um, may I uh, introduce uh, to you uh, our CFO, um, uh, an, an, an accountant, uh, a, a chair, a chartered accountant who is, uh, um, 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 you know, uh, uh, doing a very good job in the department to present uh, in this regard, uh, Ms. Pretty Makukule. 
Thank you very much, DG. Good morning, Chairperson and honorable members. I am going to take the committee through the 2023 median term expenditure framework allocation, which is aligned to the current APP that uh, the DG has just presented. Um, we can move. So this is our budget structure, honorable chair and members, and I'm sure most committee members are familiar with the structure. It hasn't changed. We're still having six programs in the department, having the administration program, which uh, has the office of the DG and some support functions, including the finance and corporate services. We've got policy, uh, planning and strategy and, and, as, um, and other uh, programs as projected on the screen in the interest of time. I will not go through all those because uh, these are not new. In terms of our budget allocation, we have an annual, uh, allo annual average increase of 4.6% over the 2022-23 MTEF. And we have some base, uh, baseline major adjustment over the MTF period. We are seeing the net changes of those adjustments in year one. For an example, our budget is going um, to, to decrease by 1.8 billion rand. I will give uh, the details on that uh, uh, shortly. In year two, in year three, we see an increase of 2.7 billion and, and, and one, uh, you know, 104 million uh, respectively. In terms of the decreases in our budget in, in year one of the MTF, which is this current financial year, it's mainly driven by three ma major issues. The first issue, honorable chair and members, is the budget cut that um, has been effected of 900 million rent from our department to the Department of Basic Education. This cut was proposed by Treasury during our MTF deliberation. Uh, as it will normally happen during um, the budget process, there's a lot of discussion and bargaining. The department has bargained that this cut not be effected. However, uh, and we did not succeed in that, but there was a lot of information that was provided, chair by treasury. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know that will include the fact that uh, Department of Basic Education has now a new function of early childhood development program that was migrated from the social development and that program was underfunded. And they've been identifying areas where they can um, reprioritize fund and our department was one of the areas. And one of the motivating reasons from their side was the fact that uh, there was some slow spending in some of our infrastructure program. And then the second area that uh, you know, influenced uh, the, the major budget decrease is the reprioritization of infrastructure. This does not make, uh, it does not have an impact on the overall allocation uh, of the department, but the reason it's showing a major decrease in year one is that some of the, the funding has been allocated in the after outer year. Uh, Chair, this is to reprioritize fund uh, of about 1 billion rand from the university infrastructure budget to community colleges so that community colleges can also have their own infrastructure. It's uh, DG has project, uh, presented earlier on that uh, over the MTF, we are planning to build nine colleges and three of those are going to be built uh, this financial year in Gauteng, Mpumalanga and, and Western Cape. We are excited chairperson and members because there have been concerns from various stakeholders, including ourselves as a department on the fact that the CET colleges uh, do not have their own infrastructure. And we've seen this affecting uh, the quality of uh, teaching and, and, and learning at, 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 at some point in time. So the last issue uh, on the baseline reduction is uh, the deferment of our infrastructure projects to, to the outer, outer year of the MTF. This also chairperson and members does not um, change the, the entire allocation for, uh, and of the vote. We just uh, deferring uh, infrastructure budget that was supposed to be allocated this year due to some delays um, that uh, our institutions are experiencing in the delivery of infrastructure. And this has resulted in slow uh, spending 
and and I should mention that um, you know there are different reasons for different cases that um, have been faced by, by institution, but also I'm happy uh, to mention that the department has been working very closely with institutions and we have put various intervention, which uh, I, I believe can the department can provide uh, you know more information at an appropriate time to the committee on what type of in intervention we're putting in place to fast track the infrastructure uh, delivery. And, um, and I wish also to mention that we are starting to see improvement in that, in that area. So this is the, our allocation chair and members over the MTF. Mm -hmm. The indicative baseline, these are the baseline figures that we had um, in the prior year when we, we did our 2022 MTF and the baseline increase and the reduction, uh, these are the adjustments that I spoke about and I'll provide the details shortly. And we can see the revised allocation is uh, the final um, allocation in our budget, 133.8 billion rand in year one, 146.5 billion rand in year two, and 152.1 billion rand in the outer year of the MTF period. We can see a uh, chair that, um, that the budget is increasing in, term, in nominal, nominal terms, and we will we'll talk about that also shortly. So this uh, slide provides the information uh, on, on detailed information on the adjustments. There are baseline increases, uh, which means we, we had some ad additional funding or we're projecting to have some additional funding over and above what we had in the prior MTF, uh, which is the indicative allocation. In terms of the skills levy, we projected projecting to have more um, allocation um, or, or collection rather of the skills levy than we, we had uh, in the prior, prior MTF. We, we see in year one, we're going to collect about 698 million rand more than what we had anticipated in year two, 760 uh, million rand more. And we also have additional funding for the cost of living adjustments uh, for our department and our four non uh, where that uh, normally have uh, severe budget constraints and the figures are projected um, on the slide. And also I have spoken about the reprioritization of infrastructure funding to the community colleges. We can see the money coming in and out of the vote, but it doesn't have an overall impact. And the details of other decreases that I have um, presented in the previous slide, we can see the funding of 900 million rent that is going to uh, the Department of Basic Education in year one is 500 million of that. And in year three is 400 million of that. This slide uh, shows uh, the budget trends per sector. As committee members are aware that we mainly have three subsectors under the PSET, which is the college sector, the university and the skills sector. So in terms of the college sector, we are uh, projecting to see an, an, a significant increase in of the allocation over the MTF at an average of 15.2% of, of increase, which is far much higher than what we had in the prior um, MTF of 8.9%. And this is mainly due to the reprioritization within the NESFAS allocation, where uh, funding has been moved from the university to support more TVET students. We also seeing some a slight uh, increase in the CET college sector from 1.8% uh, that we have reported in the prior year MTF to 2.1% in this current MTF. And the contributing factor there is mainly the infrastructure funding that we have uh, reprioritized from the university to community colleges. We see the university sector, the projected um, MTF allocation suggests that there will be a decrease over the, the current MTF cycle from the 65% um, that we had in, in, the, in the prior year to, to the 61.2% in this current uh, MTF period. And, and the skills levy, I've presented the, the figures in the previous slide. Um, we're seeing the impact of those figures um, also in this current financial year having to go, to go up. 
So the second main bullet on the slide, uh, this is just to demonstrate to, to, to committee members that um, you know we, we are aware that there are still disparities in, in the sector and we strive to for a, a equitable distribution of, 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 of resources. Obviously each sector having its own um, uh, you know, differentiation uh, strategy and its own dynamics. But also to indicate that um, there is also, um, you know, a support of um, sectors, which seeing sectors supporting each other across the board. When, when you look at the, the last four main bullet, we can see how the CITAS and the National Skills Fund, uh, which are funded by the skills levy, are supporting the college sector. For an example, you know, um, over the past um, uh, years, even current and, 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 and over the MTF, uh, we, the National Skills Fund has allocated 2.8 billion rent to build 13 TVET colleges. DG has given details um, as to where are those colleges, 10 of those are already completed. Also, we've seen the National Skills Fund um, um, in, in the prior year, and, and this will also be allocated over this MTF uh, committed to, to support the community colleges uh, by providing 200 million rent for the digital skills. The CITAS DG spoke about the placement, the graduate placement program. This for the TVET is entirely funded by the CITAS. And in last year alone, chain members, they have injected a 300 million rent to support the TVET college sector. And also, um, in, you know, CITAS continue also to, to support the, the community college uh, colleges as well. From the information that we had was that in the prior year, they have supported uh, various colleges by injecting more than 100 million rent. And there are other examples, uh, which is that we did not want to, uh, to overcrowd the, the presentation. And this, uh, the, this, this slide indicate, um, you know, uh, it, or rather it analyzes, um, you know, uh, the increases uh, of, of our budget in terms of the nominal terms, uh, the real terms as well. And it also uh, analyzes our, our percentages, um, our per per percentage increase of spending uh, in terms of the GDP and other, and other um, variables. And we see, if we look, um, in, we focus on the second row, we, we see that uh, consistently our budget has been increasing in nominal terms. But when we look at 2022, 23 and the current financial year, it will appear as if the budget is, um, has declined um, you know, in nominal terms uh, substantially. This is because uh, the 12.6% that we reported last year, it went up significantly due to the additional funding for, for NESFA shortfall, which then is consistent over the MTF. And also the major budget adjustment of infrastructure and the money that is going to DBE had an impact on, on the year one of the MTF. Hence we see the 2.8% uh, and also uh, the implication of that uh, is a negative real growth of 1.9 which is not really concerning because we know we have deferred some funding in the in the outer year and also our post school um, education and training budget as a percentage of a gdp will will remain constant at 2% over the mtf and also of interest is to note the higher education spending as a percentage of um, a consolidated government uh, spending, uh, it is uh, reflected on the slide at an average of about three, uh, 6.3 to 6.4 over the MTF period. This is the allocation um, of the budget uh, per program as presented initially as uh, that this is how our, our program is, has been structured. And we can see that the lion's share is, is under the University of Education budget. Uh, the, the, the budget to NESFAS is also included in this and will provide more details in, in that. And uh, the, the structure that did not change from, from what members will have seen also in the prior year. This is the same allocation members, but uh, analyzed in terms of the economic classification. We, con we transfer more than 90% of our budget to our 111 institutions, which is the 26 universities, uh, 50 Tibet colleges, nine community colleges, and 26 public entities. 
and we all from what the 10 percent or or approximately 10% budget that remains in the department, about 9% of that, it pays our compensation of employees. Mainly uh, it goes to colleges because uh, we've got lots of lecturers and academic staff at colleges. Our payroll is approximately 30,000 30, employees. And the department is left with 1% for, for its operation. And we see the same trend uh, over the MTF. This, this structure, chair and members, is normal when you compare it uh, with other departments that are policy uh, departments who really rely on their institution for, for service delivery. We can move. So these are the details of the 90% transfer funds that I spoke, spoke about. And you can see on the screen that, um, you know, the first two rows, universities and NESFAS, this is a budget that is mainly under, under program three that I've presented in the previous slide. But linking to what the DG was mentioning earlier on, we can see the NESFAS budget just on those years that have been projected on the slide. When you, you look at 2022-23, NESFAS had about 46 billion and, and now in the outer year of the current MTF we are at 54 billion, it's almost 10 billion more than uh, we had allocated just within at the space of three years. It, it really shows how much this, the, the, I mean, um, the budget of the scheme is increasing, the, the higher rate at which it's increasing. But also what the DG has mentioned, Chair and Members, is very important because uh, this increase is based on the money that comes from reprioritization, either from um, within the de department's budget or from um, within government's budget, which is not sustainable, as uh, the DG has mentioned, and really the finalization and implementation of student policy will assist as it was, uh, you know, propose other sources of, of funding uh, to make sure that uh, the scheme is, is sustained. And also to mention there, when you look at the university uh, budget, it, it, it decreased from what, where it was in, in the prior year, and it increased slightly in 2024-25 and again remained constant in the outer year. And as a department, we're very cautious, chair and members, that um, as much as it's important to increase the Greek scheme, but it's also important to sustain the universities because most of the reprioritization that the department um, has done in the past to fund in the next first shortfall will have been cut from university budget. So we're also cautious that uh, this kind of trend can't, or beyond the MTF, because then it will mean that we are supporting the scheme um, at the expense of universities, and we might run the risk of uh, diminishing the quality of learning and, and, and teaching in those, in those institutions. This is about the skills levy, the details. I'm not going to go through that. You can move. And the last two slides, they talk about the reconciliation of, of the entire budget. I think I've, I've presented this uh, in the previous slide to mention as to from our budget, um, how much goes uh, where and how much is, is, is left in the department. We can see that uh, what is left after all the transfers and after all um, the payment of salaries, we are left with about um, 0.7%, which is just uh, 1%, less than 1% of the operation. This um, analysis chair is very important to, uh, you know, when you think of the magnitude of the work that the department has to, to play oversight over these entities, having to do that with less than 1% of its operational budget, it really su suggests that um, the department continues to be effective and innovative, um, you know, in ma making sure that um, we, we do what we, we, we're supposed to, to be doing. Honorable Chair and Members, I, I trust that uh, my presentation was able to give a holistic view of the financial resources uh, and how it will be utilized to, to support the department in order to achieve this target in the APP. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the great thank you, um, Human, um, Mark. The CFO and Dr. Sishi, thank you very much for your 
elaborate presentation. You gave quite a lot of detail and and it's actually inspiring to to know that there is something happening and something not not just something happening but something something positive happening in the higher education sector and we we thank you on the remember that's the presentation from the department um load shading it's the lights are off here and uh, you'll understand why uh, the videos are off um that's the presentation there were some challenges um that is during the opening of uh, universities during the beginning of the uh, academic year we have written quite a number of letters to the department requesting assistance uh, with students who will be in some instances you know uh, children will have students will apply to a university and then you are you are you are you are you are granted permission to study at the university and they give you even a student number provisionally uh, pending the new pending the results and when results come some of the students had passed but the university had taken their they were no longer on the that is the they changed the agreement, you know, the letters that they wrote to the students that they admitted at the university. And suddenly when they go, the, their names are no longer on the system, you know. And and then as, as members of parliament, people in our constituencies then start calling, you know, to say, uh, we suspect in that there is, you know, they say the new way is corruption is nowadays. Anything that doesn't go well, it's it's seen as uh, people suspect that there is corruption, you know, and that how does a student get admitted? And then when you go there, you are told your name is not on the list. Even when we have a letter saying that you your application was a, was a success, we we've engaged with the department um, through our our committee secretary and. Um, in my case, it was with my uh, executive assistant, you know. Um, we will get answers, sometimes we don't. Uh, but this worries because then people start making follow-ups and we are found as a committee or as politicians uh, to be wanting, uh, you know, to be found wanting on this because we don't get the answers. Even when we get the answers, you know, it's the, they don't seem to be very accurate because then you send the student back to the university and when they come back, they get the same response that they got initially when we, uh, first, inter you know, when we first interacted with the, with, the, with the department. So I'll say that, you know, give such matters, uh, you know, quite a serious priority, particularly if, if a uh, you know request to come from members of parliament you know because if we don't get our responses on time then it means what about those who are not members of parliament you know if you if it takes this long to get for us to get answers then it shows that the by implication is that members of the public possibly may be at a worse situation than we are at uh, honorable members, these are the questions and the, the presentations. And I'll, I'll, I'll monitor this from the, from the phone. Uh, if there are hands, members can, can raise hands to, to engage with the, with the department. I see the name of Ndongene and I see Honorable Lutuli. Uh, Honorable Christians, who else are they? The only three names. Oh, and Honorable Nkosi, Ethel Nkosi, Ndongeni, Christians, in that order. Over to you, uh, Honorable Members. Chair, may I start? Yes, Honorable Ndongeni, you may. 
Okay, thank you, Chair. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, members. Good morning, officials, DG, and the crew. Okay, my question is on page 35 on, on APP of 2023-24 notes. Implement plan of the phase rollout of the safety and security minimum norms and standard at TVE colleges approved by the minister by 30th June 2023. Page 35 also notes minimum norms and standards for safety and security focusing on university approved by minister by the 31st March 2024. Please share unique achievement linked to safety and security in the PSET sector, which can potentially be scaled up and observed by the department during the oversight. The second one on page 52 on 23-24 APP, PSET in, in granted planning framework approved by Director General by the 31st March 2024. Can you please elaborate on the, on the PST integrated planning frame and how lessons from the previous financial year have been used to enhance the framework to be approved by 31st March 2024? The last one, Chair, on page 65 of the APP, revised draft fee increase regulator frame submit, submitted to the minister to approve by 31st October 2023. Page 66, no student funding implementation framework approved by the minister for submission to cabinet by 31st October 2023. If they can, please elaborate to us on how the anticipation, the, how the department anticipates the revised framework will impact higher education in a sustainable manner. And the second one, elaborate on the key success and challenges experienced by the department while conducting oversight link on the mentioned framework. And please elaborate on the public participation process linked to the framework. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Chairperson. <coughs> Uh, it's honorable to the chairperson. Is the chairperson? Thank you. Uh, greetings to everyone. Um, I have a few questions uh, for the department. Um, I would like to ask on the TVET sector. On page 12, the department have uh, in intensified the establishment of entrepreneurship hubs. A civet um, college to support students to move into self-employment after completion of their program. So I would like the department to please share the key success and challenges linked to the entrepreneurship hub at civet college. And also, can the department please elaborate on how these hubs are being uh, staffed along with a linkage with industry and banks? to assist graduates to finance their ideas as developed while participating in the entrepreneurship uh, hub. Uh, and then I have another question uh, again on TVET. On page 22 again, um, uh, the exist e -E 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 curriculum or in the NATED program. So I would like to know, um, we would see, uh, if the department can please uh, provide an overview of all the needed uh, curriculums that have been updated along with a list of all those that have not been updated. And, and also, if the department can please provide the timeline for when the needed uh, will be updated. Uh, lastly, uh, Chairperson, I would like to ask on the universities uh, that... Um, on page 23, uh, as part of the, the teacher development development at Civet College, 10, 10 universities have received accreditation to offer Civet related programs. Can the department please elaborate on how the above mentioned initiative are contributing towards enhancing the perception of the value of the TVET qualifications by the public at large. Thank you. Thank you, Chairperson. It's Honorable Christians. I'm going to continue. <clears throat> 
with the department, I just first of all want to um, go to the issue of the Fort Hare campus. And I know there was mention made of, for example, the National Task Force team that was established. I just want further clarity on the proceedings at Fort Hare. So my first question is, you know, just an update on the investigation into the corruption claims at the Fort Hare University. Has any progress been made so far? And if so, what is that progress? And then with regard to the National Task Force, to I know it was mentioned that it was um, established to improve the safety and security in institutions. What is the mandate and the scope of this task force team that has been established? And then with regard to whistleblowers, how and what is the department doing to protect whistleblowers at departments of higher education as this problem seems to be escalating? And obviously we would like to protect our professional people at institutions of higher learning. So what is being done to protect those whistleblowers who expose uh, fraud and corruption at higher education institutions? And then also I just want the department to give us an update um, on the ongoing investigations into corruptions and allegations at the other institutions, such as the Mangosuthu University of Technology, the University of South Africa, the University of Zululand, and the Mpumalanga University of Technology. What is happening with regard to those investigations into corruptions, if we can have an update on that as well. Then with regard to safety of our students at campuses. Now, recently in the media, there has been made mention of escalating violence and attacks on our tertiary education institutions. And again, it's nothing new. It's been coming on for years. Students are not safe at our tertiary, tertiary education institutions. And obviously, I think it's time that something be done around that especially for our women, but obviously also for everyone, men, um, educators, etc. So from the department side, what initiatives and programs are in place to enhance campus security? Does each campus have a dedicated campus security plan? Well, I mean, they obviously should have, but in some instances, it's not working. Can the department elaborate a little bit on this? Is efficient and effective oversight being done on that at campuses? And if so, what has been the outcome of those investigations? And then obviously, how is the department planning to address these social issues and pathologies that is contributing to the violence and rape and murder on our campuses, which is growing and not seeming to ab be uh, abating? Then with regard to NSFAS, and we've had a little bit of, of information from the higher education department on that. I just want to make mention to the department, we haven't had NSFAS on our select committee meetings for some time. I don't know, we usually, the department, as part of presentation to us, NSFAS used to come and give us a presentation as well. And I just want to know the reason why they've been excluded recently or why we have not heard from them in quite a number of meetings, they haven't updated us on what is happening at NSFAS, but it's rather coming from the department. But with regard to the concerns raised by the students at the beginning of the year, with regard to issues such as increased tuition fees, financial exclusions, historic debt, et cetera, and of course, most importantly, the residence cap. What is the department doing to address that? What measures are being put in place? Um, and lasting solutions, you know, to, to curb the annual protests at the beginning of every year, there's protests about NISFAS, specifically around, around historic debt and around residence. What measures is the department taking with regard to those very important issues for our students that continue having or are being excluded because of, of either not having accommodation or historic debt? Are there any, you know, proposed reforms or policies aimed at affordability and accessibility of, at higher education, you know, and particularly those students whose parents are civil servants and may not qualify for financial assistance? Can the department answer on that? 
then i also there was also a media report on um i just want to get the right i don't know which institution this was i think it was the northwest university where there was a news media report that there was a critical shortage of first year students now i just want to know about that if that report is true and if so why is there such a critical shortage and i think it was particularly in the faculty of education that there was a shortage and what is the department doing to alleviate that or to assist um, that those universities then i'm going to go to the northern cape with a few issues and i want to come in there with the chairperson left off you know sometimes we write to the department of education and we do not get timeless response and that is a huge problem for me as well now recently i sent in a list of students from the rural tvet college in the northern cape it was a list of about 40 students who have outstanding diplomas for as long as 10 years um you know the department never answered that email that i sent i sent it with the names of the students the id numbers the student numbers etc instead what the department did is they just issued about seven of those students a week or two later received their diplomas there are still about 32 students who have not received those diplomas i've sent in repeat emails to the department again no response from the department of education so i want to know how will the department of education assist these 32 students at the rural tvet college who have not received their diplomas yet then again at the rural tvet college in in uppington with regard to the trade test and one of the presenters um really gave us a broad overview of of trade test and how important it is but also a huge issue there with regard to trade test 11 students they were um given their seal certificates to go for their trade test however 22 students have been waiting for 2 years now from the ati in kimberley they have been waiting for these seal certificates to go for their trade test so for 2 years those students are out of those 22 students are out of work is there any way we have also once again written to the department with regard to those 22 students who they are what they are waiting for again no response um the department has mentioned that there will be um they will reply to those students in 40 days or so nothing has been received those students are waiting to go for their trade test then with regard to the budget now um during the finance presentation it was mentioned that some of the money was going to be moved over to tvet colleges i just want to know if some of that infrastructure that money earmarked for infrastructure if some of that money is earmarked for education in the tvet sector because that is a huge huge problem thank you very much chairperson um Uh, all members are you able to hear me yes sir okay you know thanks a lot um i just want to make a full just you know a little on what the honorable christian has raised particularly with the you know late or, or non response to our request um the tvet in skukune have had lots of problems with the uh, results of i mean um, certificates you know as a result you know people complete now when they apply for jobs they have to uh, to attach uh, to, you know their 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 certificates this is get another you know and when they apply they are told no it's going to take uh, six to seven months and after six months when the students call they don't get answer they say no just wait be patient you know how long should people be patient uh, after after having waited for this long to complete their their um their studies 
and then you wait for close on to a year for a certificate. This is not on. There's something, there's something, there's something very, there's something really terrible going on in the in the in the Tibet college as well, particularly when it comes to that one. Um, I was going to request that, you know, when we in the building of these uh, new universities, as part of the agreements, we should be negotiating that those students who have um, qualified, you know, as either electricians, uh, builders, and or, you know, um, plumbers, uh, you know, whoever you appoint, has to take some of the kids in, you know, of your graduates in. You are building Tibet colleges, you are building FET colleges. Why can't we bring our students, those who have completed, to go and do experiential learning in those, um, uh, with those, through those cons construction companies? Um, on the issue of certificates, and I don't want to be personal because I've raised the, I've written more than once to the department about my daughter who is a plumber. And still, whenever I, we, you know, we make follow-ups, we cannot even get the information. Then they, there's just silence on the side of the department. Maybe we should find a way um, if we'll be given one person that we can send all our requests to, because just sending them to the DG or the minister's office doesn't seem to work to to work for us. Um, um, yeah, honourable members, there are the questions. There was um, to us next. Is it um, honourable Ngozi? Thank you very much, uh, honourable chair. Greetings to your good self, my colleagues, um, department led by uh, the honourable minister. Honourable chair, I got a few questions. Uh, for the departments, we would like to welcome their presentation that they presented to us. It was detailed and informative. Thank you so, so much for that. My first question is that we appreciate the complete TVET College as part of up upgrading the infrastructure. But I want to check with the department, when can we see the completeness of all TVET uh, colleges that are under construction. To the two new university, universities that are projected, what is maybe the size of, of it in terms of the capacity and its ability to respond to the pertinent challenges of the present moment? Three, in relation of the administration, it is said that there's 30% youth and 40% women set aside for procurement. I just wish just wished the department to follow this up and make no compromise about it. Because in some cases, the case might be different. Lastly, Chair, I know we are almost at the end of the sixth administration, but there's still critical issue that must be addressed for the sustainability and the development of our people and the country. The department must address the secondary schooling outtake versus the tertiary intake because it doesn't it doesn't balance at all failure for us to address it we will have a crisis in the nearest future for uneducated uh, nation thank you so much chair i submit thank you very much is there another hand from yes. members yes chair it's honorable Bacha. Yes, Chepesi. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Bro. Yeah, no, Chair. Um, I, I, was, your name was, I couldn't see your name on the list. On the, yeah. All right. No, Chair, the, the, the first thing for me, I think uh, the issue around NSFAS can, cannot be overemphasized because I think the, 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 the much unrest that we've seen in our universities revolve around funding. Um, and, and, and obviously that has to do with NSFAS. Um, so without repeating what other members had raised, but I think it's important to get to a point where uh, we can hear what the real issues are around NSFAS because um, 
um, finances and, and, and funding is the main problem uh, that so uh, some institutions um, having to uh, close down for students to go back home in order for those things to be resolved. So um, that's, that's the, the first point, Chair. The second one, Chairperson, um, there was a, there's a TV program that I watched, I think it was last week, um, wherein there's um, students, and I think this was mentioned uh, by one or two other members as well, uh, who have been on, in TV colleges with no certificates to show for it, to a point that there's a conduct person within, um, I don't know whether it's the department or it's an outside office, where they have to pay 2,000 to 2,500 rands in order to get their certificates. And those mm. that have paid this amount, which is outside of the actual system of payment, they were able to get uh, their, their, their certificates. I'm not sure whether the department is aware of it. And, and if it is so, what steps are being taken to address such fraudulent activities conducted by people who are supposed to be giving assistance to students to get their qualifications and be able to get jobs? And I think specifically, it was more students around KZN, if I'm not mistaken, who were paying out these monies in order to get their, their certificate. I would like to get a comment from the department about it and what action is being taken for those who are supposed to be assisting students uh, in, 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 in getting their certificates in order to secure employment, who then have to make extra payments aside of the actual system in order for them to secure their results. Thank you, Chairperson. Thanks, Honorable Baha. Is there another hand? Okay. Now, what we'll do, we'll give to the department. Come on. Come on. We'll give over to Dr. Sishi to lead with the answering of some of the questions. Those that then can answer that, those that need the minister will be will be dealt with later um, through the through what I announced earlier that we will write letters to the minister and or uh, in the next meeting we'll have some of those questions answered. Over to you, DJ. I'm oh, sorry, Chair. Yes, no, Tando. Uh, there are also questions from Honorable Nsubes uh, Chair. He is currently experiencing a net network challenges. I've uh, sent them on the chat and I've also sent them to the department. Oh no, that's great. The, those those, those uh, questions will be answered. We expect them to be answered. Over to you, DJ. Um, Honorable Chair, uh, we appreciate the, the questions. Uh, they are a, a great reflection on uh, what else we can still do to improve on our, on our service delivery standards. Um, uh, may I apologize, Chair, if uh, uh, in the past there has been uh, non-responsiveness when it comes to questions asked uh, by the department. I suggest, Chair, that uh, I will work with the Secretariat uh, to, to just identify uh, within the office of the DG, someone who will take responsibility for that so that uh, I can um, hold myself accountable uh, to, uh, to this because we cannot accept it as a department and I condemn it and, uh, and I, I'm determined to come to the bottom of, of the issues around the delays. Uh, and, and this comes with a very humble apology uh, for the inconvenience caused uh, to so many people in uh, who would be affected. Uh, allow me, uh, uh, Chair, to come at the end. I will give my colleagues, uh, the CFO and Mr. Mkiba and Didichi Gasa, an opportunity to cover the questions. 
and I will uh, identify those they've not covered and I will answer them at the end. Okay, I will start with you, Mr. Mkiba. Thank you, DJ. Um, am I audible? Yes. Yes, you are. Thank you very much, uh, 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 Chairperson. And um, let me join DG and really appreciate the, the, the questions raised by the committee. Um, I think they are, they are comprehensive indeed. Um, we, we really want to appreciate that uh, the committee has raised this because from our end, we, we really regard this as a, a, a continuous input that the committee is giving as we deliver on the mandate of the department. I think the, the, the Honorable Ndongeni raised the pertinent questions uh, around the, the issue of security measures and the commitment that uh, we are making as part of this APP to try and um, uh, address uh, this issue uh, within our institutions. And I think clear in our APP, it's a commitment we, we are making in respect, in respect to this area. And um, um, I think we have committed to rolling out the implementation of safety and security minimum norms and standards, as DG um, uh, indicated. We, we are glad to really share uh, with the committee um, the, the work that has uh, uh, gone into this uh, uh, in, in written for, form. Um, uh, suffice to say that um, um, as per our commitment uh, in the APP, the rolling out is targeting uh, at Tibet colleges and, and particularly those that, that um, uh, would have been identified with the intention of um, widening the, the, the role the rollout um, um, uh, at the later stage, also to include our universities. The the there was also a a comment about um, the integrated planning um, framework that we are we have committed to, and I think uh, uh, correctly so for the first time. We have uh, had to commit to this, uh, uh, and thanks to the leadership um, of the Director General, because colleague, I mean, um, honorable members would um, uh, recall that the white paper itself, uh, the white paper for PSET 2013, has identified a number of key policy directives. And DG spoke to these, uh, which include increasing and expanding access and enrollments, improving quality of provisioning, but also through capacity building that improves pedagogical practices and um, also the introduction of qualifications um, uh, for college lecturers uh, in our, in our uh, universities, um, but also in the main improving articulation uh, between institutions and their programs. That on itself calls for, for the sector to plan together calls for the sector to resonate um, uh, 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 with itself in terms of the, the, the sub-sectors. And DG, um, led by the DG, the department has now committed that uh, it can be uh, that we've been um, uh, planning in silos. Um, uh, uh, henceforth, we will need to then ensure that our planning is integrated. And for that reason, um, a DG has put together a, 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 a sector uh, planning committee, which is comprised of um, sector representatives, but also the National Planning Commission uh, representatives to really guide and steer um, uh, how the, the sector is going to plan uh, 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 to deliver on, on, on the mandate of the department uh, and the sector and the impact that that will have on the sector uh, um, as a whole. So, so one of the key things would really 
to ensure that this committee is also informed by a particular framework, which would then guide how the work of the department is going to, 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 to unfold. And then the, there was a, 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 a question that was raised um, in relation to, uh, I think it was raised by um, um, uh, Honorable Nkosi um, uh, around the, the, the completions of uh, Tivet uh, colleges. I think in the presentation, uh, DG did um, reflect on uh, the, the, the colleges as part of the infrastructure delivery program that have been uh, completed across the, the, the provinces. And also in the presentation, uh, there was a reflection on the work um, at hand, which is going to be completed uh, in the financial year uh, under review. Um, and, and he has shown uh, the stage at which uh, 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 such um, projects are at in terms of planning, in terms of feasibility studies, but also in terms of the work uh, that is being um, um, uh, uh, um, uh, planned uh, um, as part of the completions of those. I think the question there is, uh, when will be the rest of the 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 the, 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 the committed um, college campuses will be will be completed? I think the commitment is really to ensure that um, in the in the in the list provided this year, uh, the the uh, I think in, DG did indicate that um, there are a number of uh, colleges that. Um, uh, are earmarked and are targeted to, for, 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 for initiation this year, but also for completion this year. We will certainly come back to the committee to, to give progress um, and uh, as, as and when the program unfolds. I think this was also a commitment that the DG has made during his, his uh, uh, presentation. DG, I think um, I will leave uh, the rest of the other questions to DDG Casa and um, and um, and the, the CFO to to respond to. I may have to come back um, at a later stage if 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 some of these uh, uh, would have not been touched. Thank you, DJ. Thank you, Chair DDG Casa. Greetings to the honorable members. Thank you very much, uh, DG, for the opportunity to respond. Uh, honorable, let me please echo uh, the DG's appreciation for the questions raised and the commitment that we are making uh, to ensuring that uh, the challenges that have been experienced in the past regarding uh, questions that have been raised are addressed. I will speak to about five issues, uh, DG, with your permission, and hope that I, I address uh, some of the key questions that have been raised. The first point that I would like to speak to is uh, infrastructure and the challenges that uh, honorable members have raised. Um, let me uh, first say upfront that in terms of the allocations that we make for infrastructure across the different sectors, uh, we are informed or we work with institutions to ensure that as always and as much as possible, infrastructure allocations speak to the strategic plans of the different institutions and what they intend to offer in terms of their academic offering. So to respond to the question that an honorable member raised regarding the extent to which allocations speak to education, what we would, for example, try to ensure is that the extent to which a program that is offered, for example, through the University of Pumalanga, our infrastructure allocation speaks to the strategic plan of the university, what it intends to offer in terms of academic offering, what is possible in terms of the scale and scope, and then we make sure that as the DG indicated, we align the infrastructure appropriately to that. And we ensure that we provide a very specific uh, uh, oversight. Our infrastructure as uh, uh, allocations as well speak to some of the student accommodation issues that have been eloquently raised uh, by, by honorable members. 
The intention uh, for the current uh, MTF uh, planning is that we working with different stakeholders, including, for example, the development bank and implementing agents that we, have, we are working with. We intend to ensure that as much as possible, our infrastructure allocation addresses the student accommodation shortages that both the minister and the DG have spoken to. We are concerned about the shortages of that, but we have put together a, a student accommodation infrastructure plan going forward that will uh, go some way towards addressing some of the shortages, the complaints that honorable members have been receiving. Lastly, linked to infrastructure too, uh, we have sought to ensure that in the different allocations of infrastructure, we, we, we target or we make an allocation towards uh, ensuring that infrastructure is, 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 is geared towards digitization of education, but also as much as possible that infrastructure is delivered in a way that enhances safety and security and also ensures that we speak to the intention going forward of ensuring that there is a blended offering of education that, that speaks to contact learning, but also speaks to online mechanisms. Moving from infrastructure and speaking to gender-based violence and femicide concerns that have been raised, we appreciate the concerns that were raised by the honorable member. We agree as well uh, as the minister and the DG have indicated, the concerns around in a GBVF are really quite high. We have, in addition to the specific program, the strategic program that the minister will be leading on transforming mentalities, working with higher health, we are intending to make sure that we increase the impact and the reach of the programs that we are offering to ensure that we, re we reduce GBVF. Specifically, our program is tailored towards ensuring that we, we, we increase our offering at universities, we increase our offering at, at, at um, TVET colleges and CET colleges. For example, we could provide a more detailed report in terms of just how many students and learners uh, and lecturers we reach per year working with higher health to ensure that the message of the fact that we, we abhor a, a, a GBVF and it stands directly against our intentions for an efficient PSET system is, is one matter we would like to even engage the, 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 the committee uh, further on. But mainly, as the CFO indicated, we're increasing allocations to higher health as a partner of ours, and we're wanting to make sure that as much as possible, there is a reduction in the, in the scale and the numbers of GBVF that we're currently facing. That there is the issue that was raised around the extent to which why uh, at this time around we did not uh, come with our entities that we are responsible for. And uh, we were making a commitment as the DG has indicated to addressing this. What the DG has led, uh, has, has, has introduced as a process that we are working towards is to ensure that agencies such as NSF and NSFAS, who are so critical in, our, in the delivery of our work, are held to account by ourselves, and we manage the extent to which there are governance issues and there are issues around a, 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 a reporting a going forward. Perhaps uh, from my side, uh, DG, the last point I would like to speak to is the commitment that the DG has made around uh, the fact that we, we would respond to issues, for example, such as certification uh, that, that were raised quite sharply by honorable members. We, we have a system for tracking certification as part of our performance monitoring and evaluation but we commit uh, to ensuring that we respond to the questions that have been raised. As, as honorable members are aware, we, we have a particular target for how uh, we, we make sure that there are no certification blockages. Um, and clearly this is an area of great improvement on our part. And we, 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 we will revert with information around how we have responded to the specific questions of individual experiences by students 
and uh, themselves and how we, we, we address that as the peace system. Let me stop there, uh, DG, and uh, maybe with your permission, revert if there are maybe some, some issues that I might have left out. Thank you very much. DG. I'm not so sure if you can hear from your side. I, I'm struggling with network. Yes, uh, on can my side. Can, can, you, can you hear me there? Yes, DG. Um, I'll hand over to the CFO now. Thank you very much, DG. I will comment on two issues. The first one was raised by Honorable Christian. DDG Gasa uh, already gave an input on that and I would wish to, to add on the issue of uh, infrastructure. The question um, was specifically directed to the allocation that is made um, to the TVET infrastructure. And I wish to add that we, we have two sources of, of funding uh, in relation to the TVET infrastructure. And the first part is the funding from the voted fund that goes to each of the 50 TVET colleges as part of our subsidies. As DDG Casa has mentioned, this is mainly linked to the plans of, 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 of the colleges. And the funds are mainly um, for the maintenance of the existing infrastructure across the board, be it academic infrastructure, student accommodation, et cetera. That's for the maintenance. And we also have, um, you know, in that, what is embedded in that budget is for the construction of uh, the new uh, infrastructure within those colleges in the main uh, academic infrastructure. And the, the other portion of it is student accommodation. I think DDG Gasa covered that very well. And then the other, the second source of, of, of um, funding is, is from the National Skills Fund. Uh, that's where I have presented the, the 2.5, sorry, 2.8 billion rand investment that has been made for, for the 13 uh, colleges. So this is for, the entire campus, excluding the student housing, it will then include the admin block, the classrooms, the labs, etc. Then the last comment or input I wish to make at TG is on the comments that were made by Honorable Ngosi, uh, making an emphasis that we should not uh, compromise the procurement uh, target or transformation targets rather that we, we, we have planned uh, you know, in this financial year, uh, making specific reference to 40% youth-owned uh, businesses, sorry, 30% youth-owned businesses and 40% women-owned businesses. We are happy, honorable member, that the new 2022 procurement, preferential procurement framework regulation now allows us to set aside uh, the procurement to those uh, targeted groups as opposed to um, you know what we had in the past members will, will remember uh, the long uh, you know court struggle between uh, the minister of finance and afri business uh, around the issues of legislation which was really a hindrance for us to to um, advance those transformation goals i wish to mention that since the promulgation of um, this uh, regulations, uh, the department had an opportunity to amend its um, supply chain management policy and also to mention that since the beginning of the financial year, we have started to set aside procurement, uh, you know, across the board, be it uh, through the quotation or through the competitive uh, bidding process. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. I think uh, uh, my colleagues have uh, uh, tried to cover the the scope of the questions, but um, allow me to to make a few uh, closing uh, comments as part of our response to 
to you and honorable members. Uh, uh, first, uh, Chair, uh, I will start with your, your observation around the outstanding certificates. Um, we take the responsibility to look carefully at this matter of certificates, which are not raised for the first time. Uh, is the second time these matters are raised. But I think what has confused us in the department is that uh, there was a project uh, on uh, you know, outstanding certificates with a report which was done in collaboration with CETA, which has now reported that 99.98% uh, of all certificates that were outstanding have been uh, um, you know, uh, issued. And that created an impression that uh, we have won the battle of outstanding certificates. It is clear that uh, what is constituted in the 0.5% uh, uh, that has not received their certificates is quite a number of students. And uh, it requires us to look very carefully at that number so that we finalize the, this project and, and, and celebrate its success uh, after a number of years trying uh, to do this. Uh, what I cannot accept is uh, delays in responses. And I've, I would like to follow through on some of the key issues raised regarding specific cases, particularly those raised by uh, Honorable TC um, uh, Christian uh, regarding um, some students in the Northern Cape, um, uh, 22 students to be specific, uh, whose trade tests um, have not been, uh, you know, you know, um, uh, finalized. Uh, I, I make an observation here, Honorable Christian, that uh, there are trade centers or trade test institutions that are private, that are not uh, government uh, uh, centers, where there are payments uh, because they are private. Uh, in the department, uh, it's centers of specialization as well as the uh, Inlela uh, that are official government trade testing uh, um, you know, centers. So I will have to uh, be very careful in how we look into uh, the, the issue. Uh, may I request that uh, uh, Honorable uh, um, uh, uh, Christians, I, I take the, the, your, your, your details so that we can directly raise this from the office of the DG. Um, there are officials from the office of the DG here. Uh, Mr. D uh, David Mklame is here, uh, as well as uh, the chief director in the office of the DG is here, uh, uh, Ms. Khabo uh, Machane, uh, to make sure that we get the details through the secretariat to be able to follow through the specific matters. There is a particular issue chair that uh, I wish to address. Um, uh, which was raised by Honorable Christian around Forte University, uh, an update on investigation. I'm very happy, Chair, to report to you that uh, the uh, SIU investigation on the corruption reported at Forte has been completed uh, to the fact that arrests have already started being made uh, of those who are implicated in the matter of uh, 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 one of the academics, Mr. Rhodes, uh, who was killed in that campus. Uh, but there were also other matters that were investigated uh, by the SIU that, uh, 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 well, uh, and, and as you know, SIU will investigate um, uh, civil matters, but uh, criminal matters are investigated by the Hawks. So I think between the two institutions, you can expect uh, further arrests uh, because where uh, we can prosecute uh, criminally, uh, we will need uh, the work of the police in that, in that space. But I'm happy to report the success of uh, the, the, the investigation. It has taken us uh, three years uh, for this investigation. There was uh, some kind of feeling that there was slow response in this, but when the police completed their investigation uh, the, and the arrests were being made, uh, it has actually stabilized the environment at Forte, 
and uh, we are beginning to see normal, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 pro uh, the academic program uh, continuing, you know, um, uh, so that um, this is uh, is 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 uh, is att attended. Chair, um, the commitment that you made for the develop uh, for the, for the development of the national task force have been well received by the the police in particular the national police commissioner we expect that uh, this will be tabled at usaf uh, so that uh, other universities and tabled at sacco for the tvet principals and and tvet councils to also adopt uh, this work is ongoing uh, already with universities we've had a workshop with all the universities to try and look into uh, proposals that have been made. We are lucky that this coincided with the ministerial report, which the minister sanctioned two years ago uh, regarding the security in the PSAT system. But also departmentally, we had uh, a report that was crafted by the police uh, regarding the uh, you know, minimum security standards in all institutions. Um, and then in that report that the police have crafted, they've highlighted very technical issues, which uh, will look very basic, but they, they are very important. And this includes uh, lighting at uh, universities uh, that is poor uh, and, and maintenance related issues. Uh, and, and, and these are the matters which uh, the department has allocated a budget uh, for maintenance which uh, institutions uh, utilize. I'm, I'm unhappy that in some cases, these allocations, uh, the money is turned back, not being utilized when in those institutions, there's clear evidence of the need for maintenance, uh, which is really crucial for in terms of security. So the answer there, Honorable Christian, is that uh, it's work in progress, uh, but uh, what has been done so far uh, is pleasing work uh, indeed. Um, the scope of the, the National Task Force will be finalized uh, by the police because it is uh, the collaboration of intelligence as well as the, uh, the, the, the national uh, um, uh, security agents that uh, is going to make a determination. Once the report is finalized, uh, Chair, we will then table it to the net joints uh, where it would then be adopted. And uh, we will then make an announcement uh, based on the net joints. And as you know, the net joints are chair chaired jointly by the, the defense uh, um, uh, DG, as well as the, uh, uh, by the DG in the presidency. And, 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 and this ensures accountability in the work that uh, we, we, we are doing. You uh, further ask questions around uh, work we are doing in the, at the Mangosutu University. Uh, I am happy to say that uh, uh, starting with UNISA, uh, the report at UNISA has been uh, given to the minister by the independent assessor. And uh, uh, where the process now is going to be uh, that uh, the minister will uh, 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 share the report with the council. And uh, once the report is shared with council, we will gazette. Uh, the report, uh, after gazetting, we will go to the National Assembly to table uh, the report of UNISA. The same process will be followed uh, with Mangosutu, uh, uh, Pumalanga University, uh, 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 investigations that, that are, have, have, uh, uh, have taken place. There are five reports which uh, we have completed. Uh, 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 one include uh, remuneration package for yeah, vice chancellors of our university. It includes uh, the UNISA ministerial task team uh, report. It includes uh, the uh, investigation on the reports on um, uh, uh, unaccredited uh, uh, certificates in selected institutions. All of these reports have been submitted and tabled to cabinet and uh, the minister will uh, uh, after this, then uh, publish them, and uh, we will make them available. 
uh, to you, uh, 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 Chair. And as, as the report are cleared, we would like to share them with the committee. I take into account the fact that you make an observation that NSFAS has been a, uh, um, uh, not been part of our, the delegation of the department. Uh, I think our delegation is informed by the invitation by your your good selves. And uh, in future, if it is required of us to bring any entity, not only NSFAS, we commit to ensuring that uh, our entities come and account fully uh, before the select committee, uh, honorable uh, uh, Christian. Uh, the critical uh, shortage of first time entries, we will uh, pursue this matter, Chairperson. I, I'm, I'm not, uh, um, uh, I don't have access to, to the issue uh, per se, but I will, I will pursue it and it will be part of our written uh, response uh, uh, back to you. Uh, uh, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Nkosi did ask uh, uh, about uh, the uh, completed colleges and I think the CFO uh, as well as DDG Casa have uh, completed, uh, um, have, have responded. Uh, Honorable uh, uh, Baha has uh, suggested that uh, we need to look into the, uh, you know, possible corruption in Guazulu Natal. So, sorry, DG, DG. Yes. That's the, to, for disturbance, sorry. Um, we're running out of time. We have a sitting in parliament and we're supposed to be leaving at 12.30. I was trying to talk and my phone was got itself muted. Um, and I think for this, uh, the answers that you were given um, are, 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 are okay. And if there are other uh, answers that you would like to, <clears throat> other question, further questions that you, you, you would like to, to answer, you can do it in writing so that we release the members to go to the, to the sitting. You are welcome, Honorable, Honorable Chair. It, would, it is our privilege to uh, provide all the information uh, based on the questions asked, and we shall, in writing, uh, consolidate all of that and uh, submit a, a chairperson in the next uh, seven to, to 10 days. Okay, no, that will be great. And if there are other further questions, they could be added to those ones for, for written response. Uh, let me take this opportunity to thank you and thank the minister for having, you know, availed himself for that short period, which shows that, you know, we, it shows that we, he understands, he sees the whole picture and we really appreciate that. And thanks to the management for having availed themselves to be in this meeting. And thanks to all the honorable members and this meeting is agenda.